Morning well, everyone, so we're going on a mini adventure. It's very early, it's like 4 a.m. and we have some cool stuff planned for you, but because it's so early, you better subscribe and hope you guys enjoy. Yo guys, what's happening? Dean here for Marijuana SA and today we are at Energy Wise Light Manufacturers and we are checking out a whole bunch of different kinds of LED lights. They have an awesome horticultural range as you can see in front of me here called the Earth Range and we're basically going to have a look at all the intricacies of these grow lights, the efforts that go into creating these lights and then also all the testing and R&D around that as well. Yo guys, Andy here. First thing, a lot of you guys will see chipboards that, uh, and this is something that really fascinated me um, when I first heard of it, but these lenses, there's a way off between going for lenses and not going for lenses and I'm sure they're gonna give us the science behind it and I'm gonna maybe put them on the on the spot but they tend to have a you know if you leave lights un, un, uh, just exposed it obviously the longevity of the lights is decreased and you may also get dust barriers which you know 10% of dust affecting your light across the facility side is quite big so yeah that's one of the things I'm gonna be asking them and I'm gonna be asking them when the way off uh, is good and I know they've put a lot of R&D into these sort of angles uh, these are some of the boards, just a bit of uh, uh, info on those. They aren't uh, placing chips, they are getting these made internationally. But as for the rest of the light, it's made in South Africa, it's local. You can see it's um, also, by the way, it's prototypes. Uh, these are about to be released to the market. And you have something more like you would see something like this in your home tent setup. And then you would see something more like this, which is connected, you would connect it to sort of scaffolding in a factory, uh, very easy, it just clips like that. You would sort of see sort of these same similar units but you can actually spread them a little bit further apart and that's going to be in a facility. Uh, the guys that we're working with here that are showing us around have done facilities, they've done loads of uh, small size grows up to some really sick like full-on uh, factory cannabis grows. Uh, so we're excited to see what makes these lights so great and we are looking forward to walking through. Let's go check it out. We're here under some uh, of the units that are on the sort of just a bit of the demo corner. There's no other demo units, uh, but these are going to be some of the lights that are coming into the main, the horticultural space. That's obviously our speciality. And I'm here with Anton, who's the head of R&D here at EnergyWise, and he's just going to quickly. I know you guys just saw the units, but if you can quickly explain to us, uh, if you don't mind, no sort of why this would be in a home tent. Whereas this could be actually more suited for a facility setup. Totally. So the Earth Bay is a predefined product. We can't move the modules, the LED modules, further apart or together. So it's a it's a predefined product, and what you get is what you're going to always have. What we've got with the Earth Plate is slightly more flexibility, where we can set up the LED modules spaced out today at a certain micromol spec. Mm. And uh, down the line, if you want to increase your micromol spec, you simply shimmy them closer, buy a few more products, and put them down the line. Mm. So this offers more flexibility, whereas the Earth Bays is a more a permanent feature. You perfect for a grow tent. Perfect for a grow tent. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> your grow tents, and unless your grow tents are expanding every year, which hopefully they are. Yeah, exactly. But still, that space, you know, if you've got a set two by, uh, two by four, uh, you know, that's it. You know, you put in your certain amount and that's probably your facility space. You're not really, you want to maximize that space as well. And you've got the reflective side. Yeah, I mean, even in a tent, you've still got the scalability 
uh, ability because we can you have, have another, three of these yeah. or four of these or, or whatever. So Hundred percent. And then the spectrums, uh, people are obviously going to be yeah, interested. Uh, they're familiar with this sort of tone. I see it's obviously got some of the sure. They are uh, the other tones. If you could look, just give us this ads yeah. for marijuana plants. We actually are horticultural lighting system. Mm. So there's a whole myriad of plants out there that require different spectrums. Mm. And so we actually have got the ability, we've got about 11 different spectrums to offer clients. And so really what you want is what we can give you. you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, depending on the growth stage of different plants, even the marijuana plant has yeah. got different spectrums for, for different, different stages. growth stages, yeah. totally. So Very interesting. we're able to yeah. really offer you across the board what you're looking for. Because you know? uh, I must say, I see these spectrum colors in like uh, a lot of the vertical farms. Uh, I don't know, I mean, the, the early vertical farms in Netherlands have that sort of setup, you know, that, that perfect no. spectrum that people that come to know. But this in the growing space uh, is sort of what I expect to see for cannabis. And totally. So traditionally, grow lights started out with these like blurple yeah, colors. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> classic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of people have moved away from them. If you see some uh, online courses, a lot of people are still punting them heavily. Mm. They basically are the most energy efficient lights. Mm. So from the research I've done is that in supplemental lighting, like in a greenhouse or in tunnels, it's not a bad option to go for because you've got the full spectrum of mm. the sun coming into supplement for a majority of the day. Yeah. And you're getting your maximum energy savings from having those purple colors, which are the most energy efficient mm. spectrums to produce. Here we've got white light, which is traditionally more, he more heavy on energy to produce. And so you're slightly less efficient, but you've got your full spectrum. <laughs> And I'm here with Jonas, who is the CEO of EnergyWise, and we're going to have a look at some of sort of the R&D and the machinery and innovations that they use in, in the laboratory. Firstly, we've got some really cool machines behind us over here, some 3D printers. These machines allow us to sort of expedite that process. So when it comes to prototyping things, when it comes to testing things, we don't have to wait for the tooling phase to, to figure out what does and doesn't work. We're able to very quickly and efficiently sort of produce stuff in-house, sort of leave stuff running overnight, come in the next morning, and you know the, the the concept becomes reality we get to play with it test it and and really start seeing how we can move it to the next phase so we'll have dozens if not hundreds of sort of iterations of things before they yes. actually make it onto the final phase. and out of plastic likely and not metal because yeah. I mean, if you're going to go and make everything out of metal it's going to yeah, be really expensive. it's obviously yeah. trying to keep costs down yes, as much exactly. as trying to keep like the technology and efficiency the, moving the 10th to 20th iteration will be the final one <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we've also got another really epic machine over here something which jonas has mentioned is degradation of of lights you know and being able to track that and this machine is used to do just that yeah so this is this is just basically a glorified oven what it allows us to do is we're, we're able to put our fittings in here for extended periods of time testing them at different uh, temperatures and what you get off of those temperatures and 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 the different ta points that are that are on them is we'll have sensors coming off that will monitor um the, the the temperature on on various parts of the fitting uh and thanks to our suppliers having very very uh advanced sort of levels of, of, of specifications for those we're able to see what the what the degradation levels will be so if your t if, 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 if a particular point is at x um, temperature we'll know that you're going to be able to expect this level of degradation yes. and we we get to build that in and then also uh, sort of refine our, our heat sinks because handling your your heat sink yes. on a on an led is is, is 95 percent of the challenge if you can bring your temps down a little bit, then the light's going to last. Yeah, so the, the, the absolutely. So getting getting your getting getting those heat sinks to to really be pulling off the maximum amount of, yes. of, of 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 heat in order to to give that that LED like it's 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 best shot at, yes. at delivering. And then you also know sort of how what well, what it's going to be at what stage after sort of two to three years, how much degradation is there going to be on my light? Um, yeah, very very interesting. We've stumbled into the second part of the testing room. Uh, you can see there's some some gadgets here that we're gonna get explained, uh, get taught about, and then obviously we have some data up here 
on the TV. Uh, that's obviously fed in from the master PC. Uh, and down there is the sensor, which fits into uh, or connects up to this which we're gonna hear about from Anton, who is the brains behind all of this. How's it, guys? So, start off with uh, uh, the famous Alien vs. Predator thing. It's obviously a gyneometer. This is a goniometer. Goniometer. Yeah. And um, basically, is there to test the as-built fitting. Mm. So, we've got all the components. We source them from around the world. We've designed the fitting. It's come through all of the iterations of design and we've now got a fitting that we want mm. to release to the world. This is the final test mm. that is going to be what we use and what we send out and this is our face basically. And this is going to, so obviously it's complexity is because it's going to, you need to get that 3D model so that we can uh, put those lights into a facility or actually even into a smaller, um, like small to medium sized grow spaces, that information can be used anywhere. And when, uh, as you can see, it spins around and you are able to see the live data coming through. And then you can even go as far as to build a 3D representation of that light in space it, where where it is and that's obviously going to be used then you can map your facilities 100 percent. that's how we get the power maps and um we've got a special design software where we design your facility the if there's a walkway up and down doorways and corners yeah so that's obviously you can put it all into a file and say you know because your clients are going to say we want 800 umol 100 percent across the board you got it cool and you've got to give challenge client, accepted <laughs> And if, if you're not in the money, somebody else could be quoting you in the money and you would be outpriced, you know mm. what I mean? So it's, it's just a way of defining the system and, and getting the best out of it. Guys, as well, like, uh, just we didn't mention that this is like a million rand plus machine. Uh, so yeah, we feel really privileged to be here today and to have been able to learn about these sort of things because this is not something that uh, everyone has access to and as you saw on the door uh, no filming allowed we've had exclusive access today to come in and learn about these things and hopefully teach you guys so if you can do us a solid like and subscribe and check out some of the links below so guys we are in the production facility for energy wise we're going to have a look with anton and jonas at all the different steps that go into creating the grow lights so obviously we've seen all the testing that goes in all the research and the development and then once all of that is complete these lights do go to market and at a scale and that all takes a lot of work so we're going to see some of the intricacies that go into putting all of these awesome grow lights together at the moment this is the earth plate and obviously the driver is separate to the led modules so we these drivers will be clipping onto a P2000. That's the unit when he's finished. And um, basically he's made up of two LED modules that are linked. And so it's a single power feed to two modules. And uh, from the driver here, we'll drive two modules from this side and two modules from that side. Tell us a little bit about uh, the manufacturing process and why we're not seeing any glues or adhesives on, on the product. Yeah, absolutely. Look, for us, one of the key things is uh, longevity of the product. So we want them to be serviceable. Uh, if you start gluing stuff together, you're, you're just throwing away giant swaths of your product every time. So also for, for recycling down the line, when you do strip these out in 5, 10, 15 years time, we want them to be, they're, they're called earth. It would be stupid not to take the earth into account when, exactly. we, when we've designed them. So yeah, absolutely every part of this is done to be able to be stripped down, to be able to be replaced and to be able to be uh, recycled come the time. So easy servicing and you're making sure that everything is being able to be recycled. Yeah, 100% right from the design phase. After it's been produced, this is our last one of two tests that we do for the SABS requirement. We've got an insulation and an earth test and a function test that happen here. Once the, it's passed this test, it's going to go upstairs for a two or three hour burn-in test, which is the last before it gets boxed and put into, goes out to the customer. Yeah. 
That's how they know it's not gonna electrocute anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go check the burn test. As promised, I said I would ask some Q&A about the lenses and uh, now I'm delivering on said promise. I'm putting Ant onto the test. Uh, he obviously knows why, but I was really fascinated about lenses when I first uh, got told about them. Not a lot of grow light companies are doing it. And yes, it decreases the efficiency. So, but, there's a caveat to that. So if you want to just explain uh, sort of why you opted in to go for a lens, even sure. though there's a, a sacrifice and why you're gaining from it ultimately anyway. No, cool, thanks Andrew. So look, on a bare LED, the light is, comes out in like mm. this, this bubble shape and you have quite a lot of light going left and right and those manufacturers employing that, those techniques, are asking you to bring the crop really mm. close to the lights in order to capture uh, utilize that spectrum 100%. yeah yeah and it's, it's expensive so when when you get a lens we actually focus the light downwards onto the crop and what it allows us to do is have super high umol specs mm. which would come with a heat signature associated mm. even on leds yeah um but it allows us to get about a half a meter away from the lights yeah. and still have a thousand, a thousand plus micromoles at half a meter away, which, which the guys in, without yeah. lenses are bad. Yeah, you, and in between that, in that half meter space, you have, uh, you know, that, that old favorite thing called airflow, <laughs> you know, and circulation. Sure, the uh, plants are yeah, loving yeah. more airflow and circulation. And the, they're not getting, uh, yeah, well, I suppose they, they get the airflow and they don't have to drop it so low. Uh, and it's also, I think it's a little bit easier to get in if you have to do trimming and also, if you have to do yeah, pruning actual, and this. Actual ergonomics. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that, but then what about other benefits? I suppose uh, I see there's like rubberized seals inside. Yeah, that lens is, is super cool. Um, just by putting it onto the heat sink, he's got a silicon lens around there. It becomes IP65. Mm -hmm. We can wash these fittings with high pressure hoses. Uh, they are completely waterproof. Yeah. And, um, so it, it adds it adds a protection from dust as yeah you're saying that earlier. was that was the one thing that i i heard was like you know you don't think about five but think about five years of dust on a straight led chip you know it's like unless you got a little uh, q-tip and you like go and like polish it no. no and that's impossible <laughs> yeah, yeah but the guys have been on hbs for a long time they'll tell you how quickly their reflectors used to get yeah yeah uh, yeah dirty and basically just not optimally performing yeah. you know and um, that's the same concept yeah you can come in with a lappy and just wipe it in one go so you, yeah you can hose it down at, uh, you know even to that extent um, yeah so no no thank you so much for sharing on on the on the things sorry I geeked out on the reflectors guys <laughs> I'm not being mr. cool wearing my sunglasses inside I am entering in the uh, final stage of the testing and yeah you guys can't see anything this is oh there we go this is what we call a burn test. This is basically means they put every light on for at least two hours and they can pick up a lot of the issues in that first two hours. So it's essential that you do this. And I know a lot of facilities don't because it's a bit of admin and well, a lot of admin. This is, you know, this takes up a lot of space. It's hot. And if you're running this, uh, you know, 100 lights at any one moment for a month, you obviously you're racking up your electricity bill, which is also not fun. Uh, but it's essential to pick these up because if you get them to shelf uh, and you have a bad experience it's not you know you're not paying top dollar for that experience so this is why it gets stress tested and you make sure that when you open it up the box you've got a, a perfectly working in order unit and you can see I'm sweating a bit in here and I think I'm about done for <laughs> this little room As you can see it's nicely sheltered away uh, and hidden but yeah uh, we've had a blast going through the facility we've learned a lot we are so glad to have come through and yeah this is not really I mean we obviously run the, the grow shop uh, and this is on like in the manufacturing level but we obviously selling you guys grow lights and we want to make sure that 
we know where things are coming from what they look like, how they get assembled and, and learn more. We yeah, want to learn, and more, learn more about more. the process, about the machinery, you know, get the behind the scenes and also see what else is happening in South Africa. So it might mm. not be the usual video that we do put out, <laughs> but it's so valuable for us to learn mm. and for everyone who watches the video to learn as well. You know, education's a big part of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. As well. I've learned a shit. Like yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we yeah, we know we can't know everything every time. So if you guys learn something and you're watching, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, and it's been a pleasure taking you through. Thank you so much for the guys facilitating this tour and we look forward to seeing you on the next video.